Welcome to The Real World. My name is Cameron. Thank you so much for joining us on episode 93 of The Real World Podcast. We're talking all about our favorite movie stunts. Thank you so much for joining us. Make sure you hit the like button, hit subscribe, hit the bell so you get notified of all our videos. We're huge movie fans. We're all about physical media. Uh, if you're into that kind of stuff, then you're in the right place. So make sure you hit the like button, hit subscribe, hit the bell so you get notified of all our videos. We are really excited to talk about our favorite movie stunts of all time. But before we get into those topics, let's talk about some movie news. First up, The Instigators is a new film starring Matt Damon and Casey Affleck. It's a Boston set heist film and is set to be coming to theaters very soon. Be on the lookout for this one. Jeff Bridges has joined the cast of Tron Ares. That's right. The next Tron film will feature Jeff Bridges, who, of course, starred in the original Tron film in 1982 as well as the Legacy sequel, Tron Legacy, which came out in 2010. So we've waited quite a while for the third Tron film. Filming has already begun. And we're really excited to know that Bridges is back. Is this going to be a flashback? Or does Flynn live? That's the question. A reboot of the Maze Runner series is now in development. That's right. This book series is very popular, and the films were very successful. But even though they released only 10 years ago, the first Maze Runner film, we're already getting a reboot of the Maze Runner trilogy. So no director or cast has been announced yet, but those first three films are highly underrated. I think they're some of the best young adult sci-fi out there. And so they have a big, big challenge ahead of them to make these movies again and make them in a unique way. I'm curious if it will be a continuation, but um, the report says it's a reboot. So that's going to be a difficult uh, thing to pull off. But again, uh, they're based on very popular books. I think there is a fourth book they could adapt. But again, it seems like they're going the reboot route. Not exactly sure why. Uh, I guess because it's a popular title. But uh, time will tell if this ends up being a good idea or not. Sony set some new release dates for Craven the Hunter, which has now been pushed back to December 13th of this year, as well as Karate Kid, which is the next film in the Karate Kid franchise. That is now set to be released in May of 2025. Tying into that, Cobra Kai announced a trailer with some release dates for its sixth and final season, which will be released in three five-episode parts. So part one will release July 18th, part two, November 28th, and part three will debut sometime in 2025, closing out that series, which continues the Karate Kid franchise forward. Uh, very curious to see. I'm sure there's going to be some type of tie-in or crossover with the film since Ralph Macchio and Jackie Chan will both be starring in the movie. So we'll just have to wait and see what they do with that moving forward. The Masters of the Universe live action film adaptation has been set for June the 5th of 2026. That's when it will hit theaters. Travis Knight is directing this film, who I'm a big fan of. He did Kubo in the Two Strings, and he also directed... Bumblebee, the Transformers prequel slash reboot, uh, which I really enjoyed. So very excited to see Masters of the Universe back on the big screen for the first time since the 1980s. Mufasa, the Lion King trailer finally dropped online. We got to see this prequel to the Lion King franchise. It looks very similar to the 2019 live action, uh, in quotes, <laughs> Uh, adaptation of The Lion King, one of Disney's most popular and beloved films. Um, so uh, let me know what you think of the trailer in the comments below. I'm not a fan. All right, folks. Well, that's it for movie news. Now it's time to jump into our main topic of this episode, which, as you know, is um, stunts, best movie stunts of all Time. This is a tough list to make. And of course, I've got my co-host Bert with me on this episode. How you doing, man? Hey, I'm doing great. How's it going, Cam? Doing well, doing well. Um, so yeah, this is really 
a, a unique topic. You know, we usually will do like a, a top five movies of a specific genre or a filmmaker or something like that. So this is a little bit different. Um, we're trying to trying to shake it up here on the podcast a little bit for you. So, um, you know, stunts, I mean, they've really been around since the beginning of film, essentially. I mean, even in the silent era, you had guys like Buster Keaton, Charlie Chaplin, uh, you know, so many different um, people who were filmmakers, who were actors, and they did their own stunts. And they they were <laughs> doing some pretty crazy stuff. If you ever go back and watch, yeah. you know, some of these older movies, um, I mean, just some wild, wild things that these guys are doing. It's pretty impressive, even now, to watch some what dangerous they did. stuff sometimes. Very dangerous, very dangerous. And this is before they had, you know, regulations and they had like, you know, wires and of course, way before CGI and all that. So uh yeah, they're doing some pretty, pretty death-defying stunts back in the day. But as film, of course, has has progressed, we've gotten more sophisticated with our our you know technology and, and the way that we shoot these sequences. And so, um, yeah, our favorite stunt scenes, our favorite favorite stunt sequences is what we're going to be covering on this episode. Um, you know, there's there's all kinds of different ones. And so I really wanted um, to cover kind of, you know, everything from, you know, very practical uh, stunts, you know, uh, stunts with vehicles, stunts, you know, uh, in regards to uh, a fight choreography even would be included under this um you know category so there's all kinds of different things here that we'll be discussing um what i wanted to talk about briefly is kind of how i went about making this list i really wanted to look at stunt scenes that like i said were, were unique and were different that stood out um i wanted to kind of cover the the history of film as well as i could um and really to me a great stunt sequence it's not just necessarily about you know how dangerous it looks. That's of course an element of it though. Um, it's not even just about, you know, uh, how complex it is. It's really for me more about what movies are about, which is about story. You know, the storytelling, does the stunt sequence tell a story in and of itself? You know, can you kind of just almost watch the scene by itself and it tell a kind of compelling little story with the character? Uh, what does it tell you about the character? You know, is, is there, does the character kind of, um, you know, the, the way the character reacts to it or what the character is doing, what does that tell you about who that person is in the scene? Um, you know, of course, how many characters are involved? You know, if you want to, you know, get involved in kind of, you know, we wanted some bigger stunt sequences here too, as well as, you know, kind of smaller ones. So, um, you know, and, and like I said, how complex is it? How many different elements are utilized? You know, is, is there, are there CG effects? Are there miniatures? Are there, you know, pyrotechnics going on, you know, like I said, is there a bunch of vehicles and different things like that? What kind of, you know, weapons are they using if it's a like a combat scene? So there's all kinds of different elements that I, I was thinking about as I was going through these scenes, but I really wanted them to be kind of story driven, uh, important moments in the story for the characters in the, in the film as a whole. So um, that's what I was kind of looking at when I was picking my uh, top 10 stunts Bert kind of what what were you thinking about going into this did you have some similar thoughts somewhat yeah definitely a focus on practical stunts I I think for instance I I feel like the the stunts at the in the beginning scene of Deadpool are just incredible until I found out that um that entire scene is all CGI of course he's got a mask on and all that but sure. um pretty much everything in it including Deadpool is CGI. So I'm, I'm obviously I'm not staying away from ones that just look good just because they're made on, you know, on computers. So I didn't include any of those kinds. Um, yeah. I like what you said about the story, uh, whether it propels the story forward. And I, I feel like um, most of the time these do, I do have at least one that pretty much it's, I'm only there for the action. I'll get to that eventually. <laughs> sure. Uh, but that's maybe more the exception than the rule. Gotcha. Gotcha. Great thoughts. All right. Well, let's just jump right in um, to our top 10 favorite stunts of all time. I've got a few honorable mentions I wanted to, to bring up some that just were so close to making my list that I really wanted to talk about. So I'll just mention them briefly here. Um, going back to the, the golden age, you know, the 1930s era of cinema, I had to mention a couple of old ones. And this one is called Stagecoach. It's by John Ford, mm. uh, stars John Wayne. Uh, one of John Wayne's earliest films. I think the first time he ever worked with John Ford and they worked on many movies together. But this movie um, uh, has an incredible stunt sequence at the end involving the stagecoach. Oh. 
uh, where a stunt performer, you can kind of see it on the cover there. Um, the stunt man has to basically go across all these horses. There's like six horses up here and, mm. uh, and, and get to the stagecoach. It's pretty amazing again, because, you know, back in these days, again, they didn't have any regulations, no wires. There's, yeah. it's just yeah. the guy doing this and these horses are at full gallop. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's really wow. impressive to watch. Um, one of my favorite sequences in, in any movie, um, so I had to mention that one. Seven Samurai is a movie I really like by Akira Kurosawa, Japanese film from the yeah, I've seen that one. Great movie mm-hmm. and has a thrilling battle sequence at the end. I mean, it's, it's in the rain and these guys are just swinging away at each other. I mean, it just looks so dangerous what they're doing. Um, <laughs> and it's just very, very well executed. So had to bring that up. Um, had to mention uh, one of my favorite films, uh, Terminator 2. Man, this was so close to making the list. There's several sequences. Me too. I was kind of having a hard time picking a scene. I think that's maybe why I didn't end up picking it. Because I know the motorcycle chase is great. The helicopter st- <laughs> stunts at the end are great. There's so many great sequences throughout it. So it's kind of it's one I've talked about many times before. I also tried to pick a few movies that I haven't really talked too much about. Um, sure, but I had to mention that one. Then uh, the Bourne movies, I think, all have great fight choreography in them. Uh, they also have great yeah. car chases in them too. So mm-hmm. yeah, I mention yeah. those because those are very action driven and they're very, very well made. Mm-hmm. Um, and then just a couple more here. We're going to be talking about this franchise a lot. Uh, Mission Impossible. Um, mm. Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol. The Burj Khalifa Climb. Yeah. I mean, it's, Almost made my list. <laughs> it's an all time great sequence. It's kind of maybe yeah. a little yeah. shocking to people that it might it didn't make either of our lists. But yeah. Um, yeah, there was just a, a there was one other scene. I didn't want to do five Mission Impossible stunts, so I just wanted to pick my favorite Mission Impossible stunt and put it on my list. But this one was was way up there um, as well. Yeah. Uh, the Bond movies are known for their great stunts as well. You know, many mm-hmm. of them usually start off with like a really big action scene. And Skyfall, yeah. I think, has my favorite. He's on top of the train, and there's a whole fight sequence that happens on top of this train. And it, it doesn't doesn't end the way you think it's going to end. It's a really, really great sequence. Really well shot. Um, very, very well made scene. And then last but not least, uh, my favorite one of my favorite directors, Zack Snyder. Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice has so many great sequences, but the Batman warehouse scene is probably the best Batman action scene we've ever had. I, I think it's thrilling. And which scene is that specifically? That's when he's rescuing Martha at the end of the movie. And he has to take on all the goons. I think that sequence is just fantastic. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's so, so intense and engaging and thrilling. Uh, Mm -hmm. Great stuff. So those are some honorable mentions, some that I was very, very close to putting in my list, but they just didn't quite make the cut. Um, Bert, did you have any you wanted to mention off the top of your head or? Um, Some of those I almost put in my top 10, but I don't have any extras that I'll add at this point. Yeah. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Um, just so you know, as you may have caught on while we were talking about those, Bert and I did share our lists ahead of time so we could kind of watch each other's scenes and study them and dissect them and, um, you know, try to figure out, you know, why did he pick that scene or, you know, what was the reason for this? So, um, it's fun that we haven't discussed them in detail at all, but, uh, we at least know, uh, the scenes that, uh, is in each other's list, but you don't. So now we get to reveal them to you, um, the audience. So let's, uh, let's get started. Alrighty, here it is, our top 10 movie stunts of all time. Bert, why don't you kick us off? Yeah, and you don't know what order mine are in. So even That's though you true. know what scenes they are. Good yeah, point. Yeah. Yes, I don't. So this yeah. could be startling. Right, right. It could be. <laughs> so, so for number 10, I've got uh, Scene and Speed, the 1994. Oh, okay. Film. Speed. Yeah, yes. That's a uh, great one. Yeah. Yeah. And the only reason this isn't higher is because it's kind of a limited scene in what they do, but it's pretty amazing. And this is the scene and speed where obviously a bus can't go under 55 miles an hour. Right. And I believe in they're, they're in the airports uh, circling yep. uh, the, the runway or whatnot runways. Yep. And um, they decide to try to disarm the bomb. And so they put Keanu um, on this rig uh, from a truck in front of the bus. That's also going 55. Right. They, they put Keanu on this rig. It's kind of like one of those car creeper things that goes under a car. Yes, so it's right. got rollers. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And so, and they really did rig Keanu himself on this at 
fairly high speed. Now they had they had some safeguards in place. Sure. But the fact that they rolled him under this bus yeah. and uh and the, the, the idea is I think it was under a wheel well or something like that to try to mm. disarm. A stuntman does help out with some of it. Sure. But I mean there was some risk involved and wow. and the speed at which they're doing it, you can tell they're not doing 20 miles an hour or something. Right. They're moving sure. pretty good clip. Yeah. So uh, it's just an incredible the, the fact that they attempted that with a guy. I mean he wasn't a huge actor at that point, but sure. it was pretty risky. Already yeah. started to kind of show us signs that Keanu, I mean, this is way before matrix way before right. John wick, yep. uh, but a guy that really wants to get in there and do this. And that's, that was one of the things that was so impressive about speed yeah. is that you could tell that Keanu was doing a lot of his own stunts. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. It's a fantastic scene. I got to rewatch it this week and it uh, is really thrilling. It's one of the most intense moments throughout that movie, which has many intense moments. You know, the, I think of the bus jump, you know, which I guess that's less of a stunt, more of an effect, I guess you would say. I'm, I'm, I'm not really sure where the line is there. But yeah, this is a great stunt. This is a really impressive stunt. Yeah, you can tell it's Keanu. Several shots are clearly his face under there. And uh, I just love how that scene builds, too, of, you know, they're, they get him under there. And mm-hmm. um, and then, you know, things go pretty, pretty wrong pretty fast. And they have to <laughs> get him back on the bus. And yeah, so you yeah. kind of have that whole you know, the, the whole group of people on that bus that kind of like become a little family in a way and they're mm-hmm. kind of helping them out. And so it is a great story yeah. moment too, you know, like we were talking about earlier. It is. Um, yeah. And you have, you have, of course, when uh, Sandra Bullock's reactions in that movie are so good. When when <laughs> she runs over the thing he was sitting on, uh-huh. you know, and she's yeah. like freaking yeah. out. So many right. great moments there. <laughs> uh, really, really great scene. So yeah, it's, a, it's an excellent pick. It's a great movie. Um, I like it. Good, yeah. good pick for your number 10. All right, we'll move on to my number 10 now, which, uh, yeah, I guess you don't have have the order of mine, but um, no. my number 10 choice was The Mask of Zorro. Okay. So Mask of Zorro uh, has a great sequence in it in which uh, Antonio Banderas as uh, Zorro uh, is, uh, well, he's being chased by a bunch of, of soldiers who are coming after him. And he kind of turns the tables on them and then he starts chasing them. It's a really fun sequence. It gets a lot into his character because he does a lot of things that are really clever, you know, the way he hides out and then, you know, sends his horse along, you know, with no one on it. And they think someone's on Mm -hmm. and they're chasing it. And then he gets out behind them. And it's just great, great stuff. It's, you know, just again, it shows this kind of creativity and ingenuity as a, uh, you know, swashbuckling hero who's taking on all these bad guys, you know, he dispatches all the bad guys in fun ways, you know, he jumps on one and then he kind of, you know, throws the other guys off. And at one point, uh, my favorite moment is when he's riding two horses at once standing up. <laughs> it's such a great yeah, looking. It is. Have you seen that anywhere else? Um, I feel like it's probably been done before, but I don't know the film. I don't either. I can't think of it's any other dangerous. film. I've seen this <laughs> extremely dangerous. And I like yeah. this because, um, whenever you're involving animals, I feel like it gets like 10 times more dangerous because animals, yes, you can train them extremely well. They're still unpredictable. I mean, you still don't really still know yeah. what they're going to do. So exactly. adding in animals is always to me going to slightly elevate any action scene, uh, especially when it just mm-hmm. looks as cool as it does here. Um, you know, that's, there's that Hollywood rule of don't work with children and animals, but um, yeah. I'm glad they did here because it really just makes it a lot more impressive. So this is a very exciting sequence. It's funny too. It's funny to kind of watch him dispatch of these kind of idiotic goons one by one. It's really just a, a great scene. So it's one of, one of my favorites that made my number 10. Yeah. And at one point the, you know, probably the stunt man, uh, he's on top of the standing on the horse and he, and a branch is coming. He has to jump over the branch and onto yes, the horse. That's right. And I don't think they did that with wires. I mean, I don't know. I, I don't think, I don't know how they could have. Yeah. It doesn't look like, yeah. With a tree there, you really couldn't do it with wires. I don't know. Yeah. It had, it had to have been a real stunt. It, it's, it's incredible to watch. One of my favorite sequences in that whole film, which is one of my favorite movies of all time, but uh, yeah, yeah, it's a good one. It's a great one. <laughs> all right, Bert. Uh, let us know what you have at number nine. That is where I put a scene from Gladiator. Ah, and yes. yes. And uh, this is a scene uh, Maximus has to, I mean, he's, he's, he's doing the Gladiator thing. Uh, and this right. particular one, uh, it's where there's um, several Gladiators that are kind of thrown in there. And then um, there's these other guys that are in chariots that are trying to kill all the Gladiators. It's that right. scene. And uh, and it's it's 
you know, it's pretty bonkers. Uh, the, I got to mention the costumes, which look um, fantastic. Oh, yeah, they're really um, cool. And, uh, and I, I love the look to the film, the whole film, actually. But, mm-hmm. um, and, you know, you've got flip chariots, bodies flying all over the place, a lot of hand to hand combat. You've got horse riding, a lot of swords. Uh, it's just, it's just one of those scenes that is just uh, very eye popping. And especially the way it was filmed, too. It just, just directed so uh, well and edited well. Um, although I will say it doesn't rise to, to the level of a film that you're going to talk about later. It's not on that level, <laughs> but it's still so enjoyable that I wanted sure. to throw it in there. Yeah, well, there's yeah. so many elements going on in that scene. You know, like you're mentioning with the chariots and the hand-to-hand combat going yeah. on. It's There's just a lot going on there. And to make that all... Um, easy to watch and, and make it comprehensible <laughs> um, is, is mm-hmm. difficult in and of itself, but to also do all these incredible, you know, stunt sequences and, and fight choreography and obviously all that stuff. And to make it look real and, and brutal and, yeah. you know, um, not like it's some kind of dance, you know, which is, uh, there's a place for that, but in the, Glad- in the yeah, Gladiator yeah. movie, you want it to feel like these guys are really <laughs> whacking away at each other, trying to kill each other. And that's definitely what it feels yeah. like. So it's it's really, really impressive. So, yeah, another great pick. Yeah, yeah it's not the ultimate chariot scene, <laughs> but yeah, sure. one may come up later. So. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> uh, all right, I'll move on to my number nine, which is a huge stunt um, from one of your favorite trilogies. Um, it is the Dark Knight trilogy uh, mm. The Dark Knight Rises, the final film in the trilogy, the plane hijacking sequence that starts off the film, uh, I find to be one of the most amazing stunts. I mean, it, it really, my jaw was on the floor. I remember I went and saw this. They were showing the um, this opening scene in front of Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol, if you went and saw it in IMAX. So this was mm-hmm. when Nolan, you know, was first big into IMAX. He shot some IMAX with Dark Knight, but Dark Knight Rises, I think he might have shot the whole movie or huge chunks of the movie, at least in mm-hmm. IMAX. Um, and so you could go and see Ghost Protocol and they would show you this you know, opening scene. And uh, I went with my dad and it was just mind blowing. I mean, it was incredible to watch this pl- this little plane get taken over by this bigger plane. And they, you know, attach these wires to it you know, these, these cables and the plane flips and the wings come off and then the guys come down and they blow the tail off of the plane and they extract Bane and his guys and this, this, you know, doctor who they're trying to get. And it's just, it's just crazy because they really did this. That's what's really insane about it is they actually went, uh, I forget the exact location. I want to say it's somewhere over in Europe, Scotland, maybe, or, Green, but I want to I want to say somewhere like that. But they really shot these two planes doing this, and they figured it out. And um, it's just wild to to watch. I, I still don't I don't really fully understand. I've watched the behind the scenes stuff. On, I still just don't really get how it how it all came together. Um, but it's just thrilling to watch. And it's you know again, it's a it's a character thing. It's a story thing. Bane is always two or three steps ahead of whoever he's up against. And so he planned on being captured by that guy and going on the plane and. You know, this is how they planned on, you know, getting this doctor to come and, and work for them. So, yeah, just incredible. Uh, it shows, you know, the 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 um, also shows the uh, uh, determination and the commitment that his men have, because he tells one of his men they're going to expect a dead body. You have to stay here. And he's like, OK. And he stays on the plane and like, you know, goes down with it. So it, it it's telling <laughs> you a lot about the characters and where they're coming yeah. from and who they are at the same time as it's just kind of blowing our minds with this incredible visual treat that Nolan conceived some, I don't even know how you come up with a sequence like that. Like we're going to do a mid air (laughs) plane hijacking. And that's just such a creative idea that I've again, never seen before or since. Um, Yeah. So great stuff. Great music too, by of course, Hans Zimmer playing throughout it. Um, and then that final moment when the fuselage drops and Bane and the doctor are just hanging there is a great, it's a great shot. Um, so yeah, that, that had to make the cut. It ended up making it at number nine. Well, I don't know if we'll have a lot of descent on these <laughs> yeah, right. um, movies, uh, these <laughs> scenes, but this one, I, I think we chatted about it briefly before, but this, mm-hmm. this scene just does not work for me. And it's frustrating yeah. because it's mostly technical. 
that mm-hmm. I have a problem with. So yeah. I watched this again. It's mind you, I'm a, obviously a huge Nolan fan. He's my favorite sure. director. Right. I even like, I mean, I like the trilogy. I even like this film. Right. But uh, to, to start off with, even on the Blu-ray, um, when Bane starts talking, his voice is two to three times louder than anything that's that's playing. And it just doesn't make sense unless he has a megaphone in front of him. And it just takes me out of it. You know why they did uh, that? The There were complaints when they test, mm. tested the movie that they couldn't hear him. Because, you know, Nolan oh. hates doing ADR. So he was just doing the on set yeah, yeah, yeah. muffled Bane right. voice. And, and so, the audience yeah. was like, we don't know what he's saying. We can't understand a single word he said. So he redubbed all the lines and made it sure, made sure that everyone could hear it. And yeah, we can hear it very well. Uh, but yeah, it is. It is. That does sound odd. It does. It does. I agree. <laughs> yeah. And I, I hate to, I hate the fact that it takes me out of it, but it just kind yeah. of does. And then there's things like I, I'm not going to sit here and, and pick the scene apart entirely, but there's a point where they're the guy they're trying to abduct. Like they they go to put an IV in him and, and he watches them do it. And there's not, not a gun to his head, but he just like sits there and lets them just do it. And I'm like, wouldn't he try to get out of the way of that? I don't know. Right. There's it, I, I think it's a great concept and I'm glad that they attempted it and it it. it it somewhat succeeds, but I just, there weren't, I wish there weren't, weren't those technical things that kind of pulled me out a little bit. And gotcha. uh, that final shot though, of, of the fuselage dropping is pretty cool. And you know, what it reminds yeah. me of is um, I'll just say a James Cameron film. You're going to talk about later. Oh yes. Good catch. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Good one. Good one. Well, good. I'm glad, I'm, I'm glad we had a, a, a disagreement about one of these at least slightly. So uh, that's good. <laughs> Um, uh, I think you're up now, Bert, with your number eight. What do you got? And that one is Mission Impossible, uh, Dead Reckoning Part One, yes. <laughs> MI7, whatever you want to call okay. it. Yeah, right. Uh, the one that came out most recently in yeah. uh, 2023. Yep. And this is the scene near the end where there is a uh, spoiler alert, uh, there is a train crash. And the train is in the process of gradually spilling off of this uh, bridge. Right. And one by one, the carts are coming down. And unfortunately for <laughs> Ethan Hunt, Tom Cruise, he's uh, trapped along with his uh, co-star in the carts and desperately trying to climb up each one. And there's there's all these things in his way and things falling on them that they're trying to avoid and and barely make it to the next cart. It's a thrilling scene. You know, I mean, crew, I mean, there's so many scenes in Mission Impossible, like you mentioned one already that I could have uh, pointed out. Cruz is also really good at acting while he's doing the stunt. Yeah. He's particularly good at that. It's showing the emotion and and the th- the imminent threat. Like he really yeah. nails that. That's what yeah. is so, I think, compelling about his films. I you know, and like I <laughs> this is random, but just popped in my head like in Mission Impossible too. part of the reason why I think that I, I put it so much higher maybe than some people is that I feel like Cruz really sells those scenes. Whereas a lot of actors can't do it as good as he does good point. Uh, the action scenes, you know? Yeah. 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 And uh, yeah, there's, so in the scene, there's tons of physicality. They really did this. Mm-hmm. Um, they, they had a train car that they could put on a gimbal and raise it, you know, like 45 degrees and that kind yeah. of thing. And so they're, they're really climbing. Um, there's no score during this sequence, which is interesting because sometimes right. during these big action scenes there's score and sometimes there's yeah. not. Right. Um, there's also some really tight edits. Uh, I watched some of the behind the scenes and, the scene originally was much, much longer, oh. but they, they they had to just use just millis they trim milliseconds here and there to try to get it. Mm. And it is honestly, it's more cut up than I wish it was, mm. but it does maintain that intensity. So yeah. I, I just had to put the scene on there. It's it's one of the best, prob- possibly the best in all the series. Um, but it's certainly fresh and new because it just came out. So I wanted to put that one at, at sure. Eight. Well, this is another little bit of dissent we'll have because I do like the sequence. Mm. It's not I wouldn't even probably put it in the top five Mission Impossible stunts, honestly. Mm. And I think that's because um, there's there's not a ton of, of story or character wise going on there. And I, that's there's true. A couple, there's that's a couple true. shots where I feel like I mean, it had to be CGI backgrounds, right? I mean, they weren't actually mm. off a cliff. So I, there's a couple true. moments where yes. I noticed that. There's a, and and then oh. I think it's and I think it's because so many of the other scenes, the Burj Khalifa, the the motorcycle stunt he does in that same movie, it is real. It's it's in a real environment. He's really doing it. True. And yeah. so whenever they do those ones on a set, uh, it just feel there's a little bit of a disconnect for me for that mm-hmm. one. So um, thrilling yeah. scene, very well put together, very well edited. Really like watch very fun to watch that sequence because like you're saying the especially the stuff that's coming at them it's just it gives it that extra sense of danger to it they're already in a cart yeah, that's yeah. falling but then there's stuff right. coming at them from the other direction and it's like so it, it's a really good scene 
Um, I just I wouldn't quite put it on the same level as some of the other ones where he's really on the side of a building or he's really jumping a motorcycle or sure you know, things like that. Sure, I so, get that. Yeah, so that's yeah. why it's maybe a little bit lower for me. But um, no, okay. it's it's a, it's a it's a good pick. So um, let's move on to my number eight. My number eight is a uh, great movie uh, from the '80s, uh, starring one of the best stunt actors ever. It's Jackie Chan in Police Story. Um, Police mm. Story, I just find to be such a fun movie. It's one of his earlier films. Uh, I think it might be the first film he ever directed. Um, Oh. And uh, yeah, yeah, director, star, um, and he just does a great job with this. It's you know one of these movies that's got a pretty pretty basic plot um, that's just there to kind of show off the, the stunts that he can do, and his incredible stunt team. Who you know they don't get enough credit either. Like uh, he's got so many guys that have worked with him for so long on these movies, and yeah, they just are incredible. They they really help sell the thing. I mean, if it's he didn't have anyone to fight, there's. You know, it's not nearly as compelling. So uh, the sequence at the end of this film takes place in a mall. And, yeah. uh, you know, he's he's got to he's got to fight a bunch of bunch of bad guys. And it's just so much fun. I've mentioned before, you know, when we uh, talked about martial arts movies, uh, this movie came up and uh, it's just such a great location for an action scene because it's just like one of these everyday places we go to um, and to see a huge martial arts brawl break out in the middle of a place like that is just so much fun. Uh, and yeah. so they're, you know, great stunt choreography, obviously that's kind of the highlight of this sequence is, is all the incredible, you know, um, martial arts action. And Chan is another one of these guys, a lot like Cruz, I feel like really sells it on his face. Like you can feel yeah. the pain, you know, he's in so much pain throughout the sequence and he's just yeah. desperate, desperately trying to, you know, dispatch of these bad guys he seems extremely exhausted, you know, already at this point in the movie, he's been through so much and now he has to do some more action. Um, I love that, you know, Chan is known for using the environment to fight, you know, so he's using like yeah, exactly. at one point, a, like a clothing rack, you know, to fight guys with and, um, <laughs> yep. doing that kind of stuff, which is just super fun. You know, the escalators get involved at one point and uh, lots of broken glass, <laughs> lots yeah. and lots. It's almost, it's almost comical, really the amount of, of broken glass that you see in the sequence. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's, that's pretty, pretty scary to, uh, if you've ever been around any broken glass, it's like, I remember when, when ever a broken glass breaks in our house, like everyone freezes, <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah. stop, we got to clean up this. No one move, you know? put on shoes right. and uh and these guys are just you know crashing through but of course it's you know it's movie glass but still um well it's, uh, and what's crazy is I, i've never seen a movie where so many people get dragged through panes of glass yes i know <laughs> right yeah it's crazy it looks so painful it does it really and, does. and and one the, the woman i looked her up her, her character name is, is chenna or something like that yeah and she's gonna try to hit a guy that's attacking jackie yeah and she has a bat and right. so she actually I don't, she doesn't necessarily need to, but she swings through a pane of glass and then hits the guy with the pass. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> right. They just wanted a little more extra glass in that scene. I think Jackie Chan glass, was trying yeah. to break the record for most glass broken in one scene <laughs> in a movie. Um, yeah, yeah, it's great. And then, of course, it ends with this incredible pole slide that's just crazy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I don't still don't really know how he survived because there's glass all through it. There's these light bulbs and all this stuff that he's like sliding through and you see all the sparks going off yeah. and, and he lands and I he gets he up and he starts hands. running. Yeah. I think he did yeah. get injured on that, that scene, which how could you not? Um, but yeah. it's just crazy to watch him do that, like really do it in a real place. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. That's what's incredible about this. Is, all this is practical. There's no wires involved or anything like that. So mm -hmm. yeah, very impressive scene. Did you, did you get to watch the full movie? I th don't think you had seen this last time we talked. Yeah, I didn't. I ran out of time. So I didn't okay. get to watch the full movie. So okay. I just watched, just watched the, the scene. scene. Okay. Okay, cool. Yeah. I, I, I want to say too, I love on that, that pole slide, they, they, they show the full slide from three different camera angles yes. like one and then the other and then the other is like yes. it's like you're 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 rewinding using the rewind button but they right. do it for you you know yeah instant play, <laughs> replay like you're on sports center um yeah he's like i want to make sure people see this i got injured on this this was yeah. a dangerous stunt people are going to see this oh it's a one-timer times yeah right 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they weren't going to, yeah, they were going to film that two or three times. Yes. Yeah. So I get the multiple camera setups. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, Bruce. Okay. So what do you got at number seven? <laughs> at number seven, I've got a scene from Inception. And this is a fight in which uh, Joseph Gordon Levitt. Um, has uh, changes in gravity and and all kinds of uh, crazy stuff going on. And so he's in a hotel, he's fighting guys in a hallway in a hotel room and and gravity keeps changing and he's falling. And this is another gimbal uh, set yeah. that a giant gimbal set that Christopher Nolan created so that this room is constantly turning. And then he has to, uh, deal with the fallout from that you know honestly i, I was going to explain why he's in this situation but hopefully people just have seen the movie they know which one i'm talking about because sure. i i can't begin to ex- i kind of understand the movie but yeah. i can't really <laughs> explain it per se right so uh it's just that scene i just think it's uh the efforts the lengths at which they went to to create this scene um were were pretty immense and i think it's it works it's it's really incredible to see because you don't really see that kind of stunt very often Right. Uh, because most of the time they're not going to build a, a, a rig like that to accomplish that. Mm, yeah, definitely. It, it definitely is one where they kind of just went all out trying to create this uh, sequence and make it real and believable. Um, yeah. All the stunt guys involved with that were <laughs> incredible. I couldn't imagine coming off that at the end of the day, you got to just be like, I don't need to lay down for a second because yeah, the whole thing's spinning and yeah, it's a thrilling sequence because it's, it's one yeah. of, kind of several sequences that are going on at one time and the way it's cutting back and forth is really interesting and compelling. And yeah, you know, there's kind of that ticking clock element to it as well. And yeah, he's got to cre- get creative with how he's kind of giving them the jump, you know, or the push or whatever. Yeah, uh, exactly. Yeah. So all that, yeah, it's just very, uh, <laughs> yeah, again, a very creative Christopher Nolan action scene. That's very, very good. Very memorable yeah. for sure. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, we'll move on to my number seven which is uh jumping into the mcu uh with captain america the winter soldier so uh this i think is still the best action movie out of all the marvel films i think the action in this one is incredible top notch yeah uh it's you know feels very grounded you know cap is kind of the most grounded of all the heroes other than well i guess he really maybe even more than Iron Man because Iron Man's got this crazy suit that can do all this crazy stuff, but he's just kind of a guy that's a little stronger than a regular guy and, you know, a little faster. So it's just got that grounded visceral quality to it. It's high energy, the editing, the active camera work. There's some shaky cam, but it's not overdone. Um, It's done, you know, tastefully. There's use of, you know, the the scene starts on the highway um, where Winter Soldier just lands on top of their car and, you know, throws the guy out of the car, pulls the steering wheel off and, you know, they have this whole battle on the freeway first. So you're involving cars with that. Then when they kind of get down off the freeway, it gets into a lot of, you know, gun gun fighting. And then, of course, it eventually becomes, you know, this, you know, hand to hand combat. And there's knives and there's shields and there's, you know, bombs and Black Widow's using her little gadgets. And it's really crazy. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, Cap, Falcon and Black Widow can't take on yeah. winter soldier I mean, he's like just <laughs> annihilating them at every turn um yeah and so you know i like that i like when the heroes are outmatched a little bit you know by the bad guy that always sure. makes it a little more compelling um oh yeah you know great great character moments too you know black widow's trying to use a lot of deception throughout that scene to kind of disorient mm-hmm. winter soldier and you know caps you know obviously yeah. using his shield a lot and you know winter soldier has all these different weapons and his, his metal arm he's using quite a bit too to you know deflect bullets and to do different things so right. it's just again a very creative sequence and then of course the end the button on the scene is we find out who winter soldier really is which is this huge reveal right. and this big shocking moment so yeah so this scene just kind of has everything um great music too really like the score on this sequence mm-hmm. very kind of unnerving and kind of creepy you know puts you on edge so um yeah it's kind of got it all it's definitely one of my favorite if it's, i would say it is the best MCU action sequences, which they've, they've done quite a few good ones. So yeah, that made my number seven. Yeah. And like, you, I mean, just what you were saying, like almost every conceivable type of stunt here, car crashes, right. jumping out of moving cars, dodging, right. moving cars, falling from heights, explosions. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah, it's got everything. Yeah, absolutely. Um, great. On to your number six, Bert. What is it? Okay. Uh, so for six, uh, this was a tough one because this one 
could have easily been my number one. And this is a scene from John Wick 4 in which he is trying to make up, sorry, make his way up this uh, series of stairs in, in Paris. Uh, it's it's filmed at night and he encounters uh, quite a few bad guys <laughs> <laughs> and he has to uh, fight them, dispatch them uh, and whatnot. Um, and I should say, too, there's numerous scenes from the John Wick series that I could have chosen. Mm. Um, this one, again, it's it's kind of more recent, so it's more fresh in my mind. But I think it just it's one that just shows, you know, if you want to see how crazy John Wick can get, it's a good example of it. Yeah. And uh, I, I just can't I'm just I just can't fathom how much how violent some of these falls are, even to Keanu himself, because it looks sometimes like these guys hit their heads and they're spinning and falling. And uh, I know they wear padding. You know, I know sure. they, they, they try to use some padding and that kind of thing. And I know they fall a certain way. They sort of roll, you know, mm -hmm, into the mm -hmm. fall, but I still don't understand how they can, you know, it's just incredible the way they can pull something as, uh, off like this without some serious injuries. Yeah. Um, so violent. And then <laughs> of course there's a lot of gunplay um, knives. There's even a Chinese star at one point or something <laughs> like that, that he throws. Right. Yeah. Uh, and then on top of that, you know, there aren't many fight scenes where you have to literally climb stairs. That's not easy. Like you're yeah. literally climbing flights and flights of stairs. There's 220 stairs on this stretch. I, I read. Um, and so that, that adds to the, the, the difficulty certainly, cause you gotta, you, you gotta have your cardio up, you know, <laughs> to get, <laughs> to pull the head off. Um, and, uh, so yeah, and there's obviously a lot of hand to hand martial arts. Mm -hmm. Um, and then we get, Eep Man himself, Donnie yes. Yen, uh, joins in like halfway. Uh, thank yeah. goodness. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, which he's he's so much part of the fun too. I mean, at one yeah. point he stabs a guy with a pencil that he randomly like. He just carries a pencil right. around him yeah. just in case he's got to pull that out. <laughs> oh, he's a pencil. I'll just you know use that. And yeah. then uh, you got the guy that has his dog that that like bites this guy this guy in, in the junk. And then and, and and again, unless the whole thing is CGI. I get that there's padding or something to, to, to protect the, the dude, but how do you not get injured? I just don't get it. And I love that. I love that. I don't know how they did all this stuff and it looks yeah. so real and, and wow. Yeah. Yeah. They do a great job with that sequence. It's definitely one of the best. Um, yeah. And I like that even on this 4k, I have the bonus features don't really tell you everything. Like they'll kind of show you some yeah. images of like behind the scenes, but I nice. don't give it all away, which is cool. <laughs> Um, I don't really want to like that. Away. Yeah. Yeah. It's fun to learn how they yeah. do stuff, but you learn too much. And I feel like it kind of takes the magic away a little bit. So yeah, that's sure. an excellent, excellent yeah. sequence. There was a sequence in this. I was very close to picking. Um, I ended up picking a film from a different John Wick movie. We'll get to in just a moment, but um, the sequence where he's in the uh, Arc de Triumph driving around um that that oh yeah that's also so violent yeah incredible i mean it, it's like and i'm sure some of the cars have to be cgi but like kaiser actually getting hit by real cars and he's Something. weaving in yeah. and out of traffic and the yes. dog shows up there and it's just you know yeah there's so many different i mean that one that scene to mm. me feels so dangerous you know like any second yes. you could get hit um, you know, yeah. for some reason, French drivers don't stop when there's, you know, a bunch of guys fighting with guns. They just keep going <laughs> full speed ahead. Yeah. yeah. Uh, which is great, but that it helps. just adds so much to the, uh, to the, you know, the intensity of the sequence. But like you're saying that that stair sequence is so good because it's sort of like that mythological idea of like, you know, climbing to heaven or whatever, like the whole, <laughs> you know, he's has to, you know, get there to get to the end of his journey. And, um, yeah. and, and then, you, you know, the fall down. The fall down is is really, I mean, that's people don't really, I think, understand how dangerous something like that is to do. Um, yeah. But a guy really did it. A real stunt guy actually yeah. did that. It's pretty crazy. Wow. Um, yeah. So yeah, great. The the John Wick movies are again. We could have had like all four movies, like five scenes from each movie on the list, but exactly uh, we limited yeah. it to one each, which I think was a a good idea. So yeah, excellent choice. All right, moving on from Mr. Wick to Captain Jack Sparrow. Um, and my number mm. six is Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Man's Chest, the three-way sword battle, um, which in my opinion is the greatest sword. Is it a, It's not a duel if there's three people. I don't know what it's called if there's three people involved in a sword fight, but a true um, or something, a true. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's the greatest at mm. this ever been filmed. In my opinion, it's crazy what they did. 
it just gets bigger and bigger as it goes. One of the sequences that just keeps getting yeah. bigger and bigger starts on the beach, you know, this, you know, beautiful beach, you know, first of all, it just looks great. And they're just yeah. kind of banging away at each other. And so it's Jack Sparrow, it's Will Turner, it's, uh, you know, Norrington, James Norrington as well. And they each have their own goals in the scene, right? So like, you know, <laughs> uh, and and that's explained by two of the characters as well, which is, there's a great humor in this too. That's what I yeah. like about the Pirates yeah. movies. There's a lot of like big, crazy action scenes and, you know, dramatic moments, but mm-hmm. there's also a lot of humor they infuse into it. So you have, uh, you know, the the other two pirates that are commenting on it. You have Elizabeth, of course, Kira Knightley's, you know, trying to get them to stop and, you know, talk this out. But of course, they're not <laughs> listening to her at all. Again, great character stuff. You know, it's it's progressing the story in a really fun way. Um, it's a great blend of practical. You know, a lot of it's just three, you know, guys that, you know, the, the actors learned a lot of the the. Uh, choreography of course themselves but then there are a couple scenes where it's you know stuntmen doing it and uh it's a great blend of the practical with some cg elements as well especially once they get on the wheel you know which that was a real wheel you know that they really built and and mounted cameras to and i just love the whole when the camera moves with it you know and you go to the side (laughs) yeah it's pretty crazy it's really really cool it's just very again another one that's innovative feels different from anything i've ever seen Uh, Yeah, it's it's really, you know, got good, good, funny moments. You know, I like, again, you know, character wise, like, you know, Captain Jack is fighting dirty. You know, he's like kind of doing things that you shouldn't do in a sword fight, Um, you know, and, and, you know, he's trying to, you know, pit the other two against each other and and that whole thing, which I think is great, you know, and Norrington, he's he's honorable, but he's kind of out for revenge at the same time. And he's Mm -hmm. sort of hung over, you know, he's drunk, you know, half the movie. So he's kind of got a different fighting style and. Uh, it's just great. It's just really, really fun. Zimmer score again, you know, when it comes in is just wonderful. Um, so yeah, I, I, I think it, I think it is the best sword fight I've ever seen. And, and I'm, you know, I'm a huge fan of all the star Wars movies and all the lightsaber duels and things like that. And there's yeah. some of those that I considered, you know, putting on the list, but this to me, just, it tops them all. It's, it's great. Great scene. Yeah. Ep- episode one uh, at the mm. end, that fight yeah. uh, is really great. It I is. thought about that one. Um, yeah. th- you know, this scene is so much, yeah, so much fun. And I-, I can't say necessarily that the sword fighting itself alone is mm. better than anything I've seen, but sure. that part is good, but it's what else is introduced in it. Yes. And, you know, I mean, they, they may as well have had Cirque du Soleil, like, <laughs> Yeah. Uh, lay out how to do these scenes because they got this Sorry. giant wheel that's spinning and yep. all kinds of crazy fun while they're sword fighting. And that's mm-hmm. to me what makes it stand out <laughs> because that's not easy, you know? Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. It's a great sequence in a great, great movie. Um, I'm a, I'm a big fan of the, the pirates trilogy. Um, I think all three are great. So um, let's move on Bert now to your number five at five. I have Ronan. And yes, I put this in my top five because I wanted one that was the definitive car chase yeah. scene. In my mind, this is the best <laughs> one. Yep. Um, because it's so common in action mm. movies that we could yeah. get car chases. Right. And I, I feel like so this is the, the king of those. <laughs> um, and so that's why I put it here. And uh and obviously the, the cast is uh they, they could have mm. made this with unknowns and it would be pretty intense, but but it does step it up when you add guys like De Niro and uh, Stallone Skarsgård and Jean Reno and Jonathan yeah. Price, right. Sean Bean, uh, Natasha McElhone. So, uh, yeah. and it, it it starts out as kind of just uh, initially just a, a tense chase scene uh, in yeah. France again, uh, and mm-hmm. then then it turns into this um, against one way traffic scene. And it's just uh, ridiculous. Uh, you got uh, the characters, which I apparently are accustomed to chase scenes, are, are sitting there. And at a certain point, they they start reaching for the seatbelt because they're like, hold on, this <laughs> one's a little more yeah. than I used to. <laughs> I love exactly. that bit. That's great. Uh, yeah, yeah. And it's just relentless. The stunts are very daring. Um, you know, they have to time these things very well. And they probably had hundreds of stunt uh, other stunt drivers, which takes a lot to coordinate and pull off. So, I mean, just hats off to this one. Yeah, hundred percent. This is one of my favorite action, favorite movies. Honestly, it's become in you it's know great. just the last yeah. couple of years. I've seen it so many times. I finally got it on 4K here, and yeah, uh, got to watch it with the uh, commentary on. And uh, nice. Yeah, there's so many great sequences throughout, but yeah, that car chase is easily, I think, the best ever. I mean, it's so well shot. The editing is mm-hmm. tight. 
the the performances are great all throughout it you know it has those little moments of humor uh but man it just ratchets up the tension every every second and just gets more and more intense and yeah all the different yeah. elements that are going on all the different cars that are involved um i was watching a little behind the scenes they have actually a special feature specifically on the driving and there was oh. a, a professional uh driver a race car driver who uh drove on that sequence and man i mean they were gotcha. they was reaching like very high speeds like speeds that you yeah should not drive on those streets and in, in a city yeah, you know yeah. and all the drifting he's doing and and you know all these you know crazy incredible things that you can watch him do um certain yeah. sequences he was i think sitting on top of the car driving while de niro's oh, inside okay. other okay, scenes he risky. was yeah he was other scenes he was in the passenger seat while de niro oh, okay. was kind of faking it you know interesting so, uh, yeah they did okay. like, all kinds of different uh, yeah. different things for it to, to make it look believable. And they certainly pulled it off. It's really, really fun sequence to watch. So yeah, excellent choice. All right, moving on to my number five now. Um, man, all five of these, uh, it could really pretty much be in any order. Um, it, it, they're all so good. They're all just amazing to watch. I could watch them on loop. Um, but and, and number five, I went with True Lies, um mm. the bridge rescue sequence so um at this point in the movie arnold schwarzenegger has to save his wife jamie lee curtis who's been captured by the bad guys uh she's in a limo uh on a, a bridge over water it's actually all shot in key west florida um and so uh he's got a, on a real bridge her. right on a real bridge on a real bridge yes exactly um yeah they closed the bridge down to, to shoot the sequence uh for a couple of days and uh, Arnold's in a helicopter, and she, so she's in the limo, and she's in kind of part of this convoy of, of bad guys. They've got a couple trucks full of bad guys and, and weapons that they're going to, you know, to blow up some stuff. And so he's got to rescue her, and so he calls in an airstrike to take out the bridge. That sequence where, where the bridge explodes is all miniatures, actually. So that was shot on a soundstage mm -hmm. via miniature. Although the, I say miniature, the, the truck was like huge. It was like a huge, it wasn't really like a, we think of miniatures, like these tiny little matchbox yeah, cars, but yeah. this was like a big miniature that they built. It was like really, really large for a miniature. And so they shot that sequence, blew up the bridge, um, you know, had the truck, you know, go off the bridge. And then um, for the limo stuff though, I mean, that was all real. That was, you know, a real limo driving on the bridge and brought in a real helicopter and uh you know it it's again it's a sequence like that where there's so much going on there's explosions and there's you know uh helicopters and everything it's it's all in the editing right we, we talk about editing a lot yeah. and how it just they make yeah. it so seamless and make it feel so like it's all one thing it's like it's crazy to think like no we shot that scene on a sound stage in hollywood and then we went to key west and shot this portion of it and it's just kind of crazy how it all comes together so seamlessly, but that's the the magic of movies. Um, uh, Arnold, you know, is is doing a great job, kind of desperately trying to save his wife, and then Jamie Lee Curtis is great because she has a little bit of choreography inside the limo, fighting, yeah, yeah. fighting a bad guy in there, and so you have that kind of little fight sequence going on while there's all the stuff on the bridge. There's of course you know the bad guys that stop just before they get to the blown out bridge and the pelican you know just adding some humor in there That's it's great, always yeah. great it's always it's a great addition when they do those little yeah. things and then um you finally have the helicopter coming over the the limo which this this shot mm -hmm. is just incredible when he when he grabs her she comes through the sunroof and he takes her hand and the limo falls off the bridge she's hanging literally by his hand off the helicopter and it's just such a great shot. It's amazing that they captured that on film. And that's, of course, a stunt woman, uh, stunt double for Jamie Lee Curtis doing that actual stunt. Um, and uh, what was cool, though, was the shot of um, the shot of Jamie Lee Curtis's face as, as the bridge kind of falls away and you kind of see her reacting to it. Um, yeah. James Cameron was operating the camera. He was actually hanging off the side of the helicopter when they got that shot so i like it when directors you know they're like willing to put themselves at risk along with their yeah. actors that's always uh always good shows that they're good 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 sports 
Um, but yeah, just some incredible, incredible stunt work. Again, that's another sequence that has a lot of different elements to it. Um, that makes for just a, a thrilling sequence. Nice. Yeah. And, and again, I feel like that's a similar shot in, um, uh, dark Knight uh, rises. Mm -hmm. Um, both are, are very well done, but yeah. you know, Cameron did it first. I think it's slightly more effective, I think so. um, because of the emotional aspect of it yes. in true lies. Yeah. The yeah. story reason. Yeah. They're kind of like, yeah, at that point in the story, they're kind of estranged. Like she really doesn't like him because he's been lying to her right. like his whole life. So, uh, that she, you know, takes his hand at that moment is, is a big kind of moment for their characters too, which is always, you know, that's the goal of, I think should be the goal of a lot of these scenes is to move the story forward too. So, um, yeah. And that, that's another movie just full of so many, the horse, I thought about the horse scene in that movie was really fun, you know, and, uh, yeah. you know, the airplane uh, oh, sequence yeah. at the Lots end and there's so many good ones. Yeah. But, um, I'll throw it back to you, Bert, for your number four. And for that one, I've got first strike or Jackie Chan. And for a strike or police story seven or something four, like that. Yeah. Right. Uh, so, oh, four. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I still haven't had a chance to yeah, watch I, the whole I, movie, uh, but I did watch the scene. Oh, so. okay. Yeah. 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 There are other scenes that are a lot of fun too. Um, yeah, definitely. I'm going to watch uh, the movie. So I took I this like ladder scene. Where, yeah. And it's the scene where he's, um, he's trying to find someone and he goes into this warehouse and there's, mm. so, I guess you could say sort of bad guys. And so they start attacking him. <laughs> and then in true Jackie fashion, he uses everything around him to defend himself. And I just think to me, I mean, I've watched quite a few of his and this is sort of the best example of, you know, you got the, the comedy, the athleticism, yeah. um, and the you know just in the intensity too, you know it's funny. Jackie is mostly a defensive fighter. Yeah, he doesn't attack people usually. He will use things mm -hmm. around him, and he'll he'll throw it back at them, or he'll punch back. But he doesn't yeah. usually attack people. Right. Uh, he's trying to defuse this situation, in fact. And yeah. um, so, and throughout this film, there's many scenes like that. And another one that's similar is Mr. Nice Guy came out mm. around the same time a lot of scenes like this where he's kind of mistaken for the for the bad guy or, or guys start fighting him and he's like no stop i'm not that guy you know <laughs> and so I, I i love that about him but but in this ladder scene you know the ladder is real i mean if you're watching the outtakes mm. like this isn't something that is made out of foam or something like that it's a real ladder uh has to support his weight for instance at various times um and then there's these pallets that he's jumping out of the way of and, and these things all have weight so these things can all injure you uh and then I just Jackie is just a brilliant comedian, frankly, because mm -hmm. as good as um, Jet Li or some of these other guys are, mm -hmm. um, Donnie Yen at um, martial arts, um, Jackie just has this way of just making it. I'm, I'm laughing the whole scene, you know, pretty much. Yeah. Or, or I got a big smile on my face. It's not yeah. about how how dangerous it is, but that's 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 part of the fun. And, J and Jackie's right. just the master at that. I think. Absolutely. Um, overall, I wish his films were a little more compelling. Like. Uh, if you like that scene, you'll you'll see other scenes like that. But mm -hmm. some of these movies, just the acting isn't quite, or I should say the dubbing. The dubbing isn't quite there. <laughs> yeah. Some of the bad guys are more like goons than bad guys yeah. we can actually sink our feelings into and, and, right. and empathize with, you know. Yeah. So this is one of those that I, if it, you know, if I'm talking about a subject, I might say, have you ever seen this movie? I'll, I'll pull up that scene, but I won't say, oh, we should sit down and watch the watch entire the thing. Movie. So. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, because that's kind of unfortunate, but um, it is worth seeking out those scenes. And they are, I mean, there are some funny parts. I mean, they're not yeah. bad movies. Sure. I mean, I think the movie is probably, probably three and a half stars. But I wish that he did have sort of that big action film where we actually could get into the characters and the acting was good all around and that kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah. Have you seen The Foreigner? Yeah. Yeah, that was pretty I good. That was, that was pretty, pretty good. good. That was a lot more dramatic than what he usually does. Pretty intense. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that wasn't so much the uh the comedy yeah, type of fighting which exactly. jackie's kind of known for right yeah. exactly uh yeah no, i've seen the first so that was much better yeah right yeah. Exa that's what i'm saying yeah the 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 character the dramatic story of that one was pretty compelling yeah um and uh right. yeah i've seen the first three police story movies i own the first two i just saw the first the mm. third one i want to get it because it was it was great there were some sequences in that that i considered adding to this list uh, there's a scene with a helicopter and scene with a train and that it's there's some really crazy stuff but um yeah i want to want to watch uh, first strike and and the rest of the police story i think there are like seven or eight police story movies at this mm. point it's like his big franchise over in china but um yeah excellent choice um let me move on to my number four which has been alluded to already it's a classic one of my favorite movies of all time ben hur 
Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. the chariot race in this film is absolutely phenomenal. I mean, really incredible filmmaking. Uh, It's a fairly long sequence, but it's, it's very well edited. Um, and extremely dangerous. I mean, th- this is again before CGI days, yeah. so they had to really film this. Uh, it- it's got basically no music. I think throughout the whole sequence. Um, I think you're right. Yeah. yeah, it builds intensity all the way through the end with without music. It's just sound effects. It's you know, what's great about this? It's all in a coliseum, right? So you do get a lot of audience reactions too, which I think adds a lot to it and and makes it you know engaging yeah. uh but it, it does i think dropping the music out of s- certain sequences really does enhance the realism and yes. and it can you know ratchet up the intensity quite a bit um so great great sound design you know that that's a big element of this that i think helps make it work there's some pretty shocking moments of violence here that are just <laughs> brutal um to Some watch unintentional right <laughs> right yeah exactly yeah it's yeah. there's again there's so many you know stunt guys obviously in this sequence there's so many different chariots and as they're you know bumping into each other and again it's it's another one where we have animals so <laughs> very unpredictable what the animals are going to do um there's a scene where uh a moment in the scene where uh judah ben her flips over the the chariot yeah. that was not planned that was right. <laughs> something that happened on the day and he's like uh, keep rolling right. you know <laughs> he flips over yeah. and then he has to crawl back in you're alive keep rolling <laughs> right exactly so pretty uh pretty amazing that they captured all those moments and as kind of happy accidents i guess happen just to add mm-hmm. to the the insanity that's already you know occurring on screen and this is really the um, dramatic climax of the film. This is what we've kind of all been waiting for the whole movie. This, you know, three and a half hour epic film. Uh, we've been waiting for uh, Judah to meet, you know, uh, his former best friend, uh, Masala, on the, the, the race course here. And uh, it does not disappoint. Um, and uh, it, it ends with a... a rather you know it's like i said a kind of shockingly violent uh end um but uh yeah i think it's it's again the the way it's shot the the editing um all of it the 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 stunt work is just absolutely amazing to watch so yeah it it had to be up there somewhere i I didn't know where i was going to put it i ended up putting it at number four um but it like i said it could be could be at number one really but um it's it's a great scene so yeah that's that's been her. Yeah, it's, it's a good movie. Uh, that that scene is a marvel. I mean, it's incredible, and I'm I'm sure it, it paved the way for a lot more people willing to um, do risky things. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. This is 1959. I mean, this is you know back in the the early days. So, yep. Good stuff, uh, Bert. What do you have at number three? That's where I put a scene from the movie Daylight ah. from I believe 1996. Mm-hmm. Did you get a chance to see this scene? I still haven't watched the whole movie. I did watch the yeah, scene. Okay. I was able to find the great, scene online great. and watched it. Yeah, it's it's, it's yeah. cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so the plot is the um, the underground tunnel um, between Manhattan and um, Jersey, I believe, um, under the Hudson River. Uh, there's explosions and both ends of the tunnel collapse. And so um, these people need to, the people that survived are trying to get out. And so Stallone is kind of this emergency management guy. And he he uh, they, they, he knows a way to get into the tunnel, and then from there he's going to try to help them everybody get out. But there's only a, this kind of a one way ticket to get in. It's through this um, these uh, giant ventilation fans that are vertically stacked, and and so th- they have one chance to stop the fans and then have them get through it. But it's not as simple as just dropping through all four fans because just by with inertia they never mm-hmm. stop completely, and then they start picking up speed. And there's a time limit for how how quickly they'll start again. And um, I, I watched the commentary and this director, Rob Cohen said there were two 80 foot high sets and it took 12 days to shoot the fans. Stallone worked without wires and just day after day, hanging upside down. Um, one point he got hit with one because they're real, real fan blades. He got hit. Uh, he got uh, four stitches to the head at one point 
And and Sloan, he clearly takes some falls from several feet in the air more than once. Um, and, and so I'm sure they did this several times. Yeah. And then the the collectic part of it is then there's this uh, sort of a cyclone fan at the very end with garbage blowing around the set and stuff. <laughs> and so it's just an incredible scene. It's one of my favorite sort of disaster films of all time. And there's actually another really good physical scene that I could have picked from daylight, but this one's my favorite. It's just a great scene. Yeah. It's great. It's very unique. Um, yeah. The different yeah. elements, like you're mentioning of the, uh, the timers, you know, and, and that whole element yeah. of it, you know, it's kind of that ticking clock thing just ratchets up the tension even more. And uh, yeah, very, yeah. very different. You know, it's it was cool to to watch him do all that and the way it's edited and the way there's constant motion, like mm -hmm. even w like when you're at the wide shots, the fans are obviously moving. But there's a couple of scenes where you're kind of in his POV almost you're going like by the yeah. clock, watching the clock and you kind camera right, kind of hands right. by like little things like that that I thought were really clever that they did in that scene to kind of yeah. keep you in it and kind of put you in his shoes almost disoriented. Like, Right, yeah. right, definitely. So, yeah. yeah, great sequence. I can't wait to watch that movie. Um, yeah, looks really good. So, cool. We'll move on to my number three. Going back to John Wick. Mr. Wick, we're going to chapter three this time. Um, this movie, again, has so many great ones. I, I'm, I'm a huge fan of the opening sequence where he's fighting the guys in the, the weapon shop with all the knives and all that. That's a great one. But um, I ended up going with uh, the sequence that I call dog foo. So this, you know, they're known for the the gun foo is kind of their their trademark thing of, you know, all the gun gun play and gun action mixed with martial arts. But in this film, we get this crazy sequence where Keanu and Halle Berry uh, infiltrate this, you know, bad guy base and have to work their way out of it. Um, and she happens to have two of her highly trained vicious german shepherds with her and so they're <laughs> assisting them as they take out these bad guys and it's again I, you know I've, I've got several films here with with animals involved uh i just feel like that <laughs> makes it so much more dangerous uh you know yeah. when you're involving an, an animal again obviously very highly trained um to be able to yeah. you know work on command like that but that's just a, a variable that seems to me to be very uh very dangerous um it uh it kind of is the ultimate john wick scene i feel like because it involves dogs and you know the whole thing started with his dog dying so yeah uh, i like it when they when they involve the dogs in it because it just kind of reminds us of that very first movie and how this all started so i think you know story-wise yeah. it's kind of a cool thing you know he starts he starts off the scene starts with the bad guy killing one of halle berry's dogs and she goes off, you know, and she's kind of the reason they're in this whole mess because she kind of <laughs> goes crazy. Um, and they have this really brief moment where, you know, she looks at John Wick, who's, you know, obviously looks a little disappointed at what she's just done. And she goes, he killed my dog. And he goes, I get it. You know, <laughs> he's like, and then they go <laughs> off and and take out the rest of the bad guys. So it's just, you know, great little moments like that. The, mo yeah. the, the dogs going after you know the crotches i mean that's just you know for a dude how do they do it man yeah th there's some brave stunt guys in these movies they're yeah. really <laughs> they're really brave guys <laughs> uh, i gotta give them a lot of credit um for going all out uh for these action sequences halle berry also in this sequence is very believable as an action mm -hmm. star i mean i really want to see her yeah. do more action after this she was really right. good um of course, Keanu, he's, you know, the ultimate pro, you know, doing all these incredible things he does, um, you know, with the guns and the reloads. And there's there's great there's, again, humor sprinkled throughout the sequence, um, but it's also, you know, very exciting and intense and fun to watch. So um, it had to make the cut. It, this was this was tough, though, because, like I said, there are a lot of a lot of great John Wick action scenes, but this one just can be kind of was the one that stood out, you know, as I was going, going back in my mind, thinking about each one. I was like, yeah, that's, that's going to be the one that's going to make it. So yeah, great choreography, obviously great camera work, a lot of long, long one, one takes in that one. So yeah, big fan of, of John Wick three in that, that scene. Yeah. It's, it's an excellent scene. And uh, I just had to point out the athleticism of the dogs. Yeah. I know they're trained, but yeah, you know, maybe should that be uh, one of the uh, Reilly's awards, you know, it was best stunt animal. That's a great Best one. I think we should add animal it. stunt. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Why not? 
we need to give the stunt community more awards. So yeah, we'll add as many as right. as many as we can. Um, <laughs> let's move on to your number two, Bert. What do you have there? There I have uh, Matrix Reloaded. Mm. There are at least three scenes that I could have put in in this uh, for number two. Yeah. Uh, one of them is the scene where um, Neo fights like 100 agents, but part of that does end up CGI. So I, I backed away from that one. And then there is the amazing freeway uh, mm. scene, uh, which is an excellent car chase scene. Some of that is CGI enabled. Uh, but it kind of pays tribute to Ronan in some ways <laughs> yeah. uh, because they're going against traffic. Uh, and then mm -hmm. there's the fight on top of the semi that right after that. Mm -hmm. So uh, all of that is just, uh, inc inc you know, amazing to me, but mm -hmm. I, I selected the Chateau scene and that's where they're in this very ornate uh, room with a staircase going up on each side of it. And there's weapons in every square inch of the wall, pretty much <laughs> a smorgasbord of weapons. <laughs> um, and, and it's just, um, I, I picked this scene because, um, it is very much more uh, because of the stylistic qualities of it. Mm -hmm. um, just giant points for this for the style. There's a lot of slow mo. This is almost like a ballet or you know you know um, some kind of yeah. uh, dance here in this case. Yeah. And obviously there's wire work, but you know they're in the matrix, so it makes sense to me. Right. The variety of weapons that are wielded. I mean, it's just a catch all. Like uh, every possible. I mean weapons that I didn't even know existed, but I, <laughs> you see it and you're like, Oh yeah, that could do some damage. You know? <laughs> right. uh, so I, I, I love that. The camera angles are great. Um, mm -hmm. The wire work, you know, it's not easy either. So there's quite a bit of, phys bit of physicality and uh, the martial arts are really fantastic. People are crashing through sculptures and falling from heights. And so in a way it is pretty gritty as well. There's a lot of mm -hmm. flying particles uh, and I'm a huge fan of slow-mo, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so it's, it's employed quite often in this scene. Uh, honestly, I, I just, the only thing is I would just wish I could watch the scene again for the first time because right. I remember it in the theater and I just couldn't mm. believe what I'd just seen. Yeah, it is a great sequence. It's definitely one of the best from the whole trilogy that really stands out that like you're saying, doesn't extensively use CGI or anything like that. It's, you know, just stunt guys in a room doing their their choreography yeah. with all these wacky weapons and like you're mentioning about this the the wire work it is tough to make that look effortless like i would yeah, imagine yeah. being in that rig would be so like constraining and it would feel so awkward but it really just looks right. like they're floating through the air doing their matrix thing you know and um, yeah yeah it's a, it's a really really good sequence so yeah excellent excellent choice another keanu keanu man he's right he's he's unavoidable and, yeah absolutely um all right we're going back into mission impossible now for my number two pick it is mission impossible rogue nation and the scene that is on the cover of the disc that's how you know they wanted to market the movie off this and uh the crazy thing is it's the opening scene of the movie <laughs> you know i'm going into this thinking oh the, the end mo the end scene is going to be great when he gets on that plane it's like no they open the movie <laughs> right. with this crazy <laughs> stunt that yeah. they spent months working on and planning i mean the planning that had to go into this the yeah the insurance i don't know how they get that to work <laughs> um the physics though yeah 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 the physics of it it's crazy um yeah ethan hunt is desperately trying to stop uh bad guys from destroying the world uh we don't really know much about what what this mission is he's on it looks like some type of bio weapon there's like a biohazard emblem on the the containers he's trying to get but yeah he's got to stop them at all costs and in, in typical ethan hunt fashion it's not going to be easy so he's got to hitch a ride on the plane uh first of all just running on the wing you know jumping on the plane running on the wing and then trying to get in through the door and it's the, again the sequence has such great humor to it because benji's there <laughs> trying to yeah. log in you know and get into the plane to help him get inside and you know <laughs> and the plane's taking off and again, Cruz is just so great at playing this. Open the door, you know. He's screaming at him the whole time, <laughs> and uh, it was crazy. There's quite an extensive featurette on this on the Blu-ray where they show you, you know, he's obviously wired onto the plane, but they had to build like special contacts for his eyes, and I yeah, think they yeah. even had to put some kind of something on his face because the 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 jet engine right. is basically right in front of him. And he could have get, oh, wow. gotten severely burned or something. It's, it's just like all kinds of danger that you don't even really think about when you watch the scene. But it's yeah. so extremely dangerous. No one's ever yeah. tried anything, in my opinion, anything even close to this level of <laughs> d 
danger True. in a scene yeah. Um, yeah to be actually on the side of a plane as it takes off and goes into the air yeah. i don't know how high it ends up going but uh yeah i mean they're well off the ground I mean, if he falls he's dead right There's no way he survives so um yeah extremely dangerous to watch and to watch it is just so much fun again because of the humor that's going on between the characters and mm -hmm. uh all of it it's just it's mine it's one of those scenes that just you don't understand how it how it happened how how anyone allowed it to happen <laughs> and then how they actually pulled it off um it's just yeah the perfect blend of like how did they do that action with you know this character driven kind of humor and kind of just a kind of simple story of a guy trying to stop a bad guy from doing something but yeah, uh, yeah it's it's so crazy to watch um watch him do these incredible things and this is to me they haven't quite topped this yet i mean the motorcycle jump in the yeah. new one was great you know fallout has so many great the helicopter and so many other great sequences yeah, the yeah. halo jump but this right, to me when i watch right. it it's the one that makes me just go how <laughs> how is that possible for someone to do that so yeah i had to make the list yeah. made number two I, I listened to the commentary and, uh, yeah. it, you know, the, the jump onto the wing itself, that was real because yeah. they, they were yes. trying to find a hill that, that they could move the plane alongside to make that jump. Mm -hmm. And then uh, another thing I wanted to point out that I gleaned from that was that um, this stunt with the plane taking off, they, they did it eight times. Wow. For the yeah, that's right. Yeah. I remember and, them saying uh, that. Yeah, they had to do it. Yeah. Eight yeah. Times. And then the. <laughs> Part of the danger is um, any debris, like a, a bird, a yes. bird strike. I mean, that that could be you know very damaging to a, a human body yeah. at, at those speeds. So yeah, very right. dangerous. Yeah, only Tom Cruise. Crazy. <laughs> only Tom. <laughs> all right, Bird, go ahead and give us your number one pick for your favorite movie stunt of all time. It is a scene from Fury Road, Mad Max ah. Fury Road. Yes. Uh, this film, I I didn't really understand it the first time, and so I didn't appreciate it as much. Yeah. But since then, it has really mm -hmm. taken off in my brain. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, and it, it's like the director. This whole movie, it's like he had a crazy dream, and then woke up and you know made the movie about it. Um, okay. Except the payoffs are plentiful. I mean, it's not like something that doesn't make any sense or have any conclusions. Right. right. And um, and there's just some there's just nothing else like this. Uh, mm -hmm. Even the the first two Mad Maxes, which I just finished, um, mm -hmm. there are glimpses of mm -hmm. what's to come. And I really like those things. Yeah. I haven't seen the third one yet, but okay. um, there's just, I've never seen anything like this. It's the scene that I chose is the chase scene. It's kind of a long chase scene where as pictured behind me. Yeah. I was going to say it's these, going on right uh, now behind you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're still going. It. <laughs> it, it just never ends. And they're, 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 they're on these long poles and they're doing just these, you know trapeze like kind of stunts <laughs> um I, I guess they nicknamed the the guys on the poles they called them pole cats <laughs> okay. and uh these guys did it for real i mean this was a real group of stuntmen that really did this um uh and then you got this uh, incredible stunt driving i mean the, the the vehicles in the movie are just out of this world i mean that that could be a whole other thing we could talk about there we're focusing on the stunts though but yeah. The, the 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 stunts that take place on moving cars um the, between hand-to-hand -hand combat and mm -hmm. and and falls and explosions um it's it's got pretty much everything um yeah they're 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 climbing onto vehicles that are moving and clinging to them and falling off of them um the music is really good it, this scene though i mean it's just it's just so bonkers and vi it's just downright vicious at times yeah. uh and and just absolutely beautiful the way it looks is just so stunning the whole film really but mm -hmm. uh i just i can't get over it and i've seen the movie now three or four times i went from probably eh, three stars to probably right to five the, on the second <laughs> viewing yeah. uh because i kind of understood a little bit more about what what was taking place but sure. the, this is um there's more than just this scene that's like this, but yeah. with especially with the, the people that are on those those poles yeah. in moving vehicles. Yeah, I just can't right. <laughs> think of anything else like that that I've ever seen. Yeah, you were mentioning Your uh, thoughts? Cirque du Soleil earlier. I feel like this is yeah. kind of Cirque right, du Soleil yeah. on the road, you know? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty crazy. Take it on the yeah. road. Yeah, it's a yeah. wild sequence. It's, again, it's one of these very innovative sequences that's like, yeah, like you're saying, it had to have been some weird dream. Like, how can you come up with that even? Like, where does that come from? That whole idea of <laughs> right. these guys on poles, on cars, like 
but it's cool and it kind of makes sense like you know if, yeah in the future this future all the war takes place on the road so like you would want ways of getting on cars you know and things like that so it's just yeah. i guess it comes out of that whole idea of him just i mean he's george miller created this world in 1979 so he's lived in it for like literally right. decades so he's, he's time to flesh everything. it out yeah exactly i mean let's face it there's no reason to have an electric guitarist on the moving <laughs> vehicle in the front but but actually there is because it's awesome right yeah right. and then the fact that it this guitar shoots out flames doubles yes. uh the awesomeness and, exactly. and then you know they got this even just that guy they got him in this harness that's like yeah. on bungees right and so he, he what happens to his body while yeah. he's trying to maintain and, he, and then even when he's been being flown around he still will play the guitar right i love it i mean it's just incredible it is. It's yeah, just, and- uh, there's kind of precedent for it because I mean, even like in old wars, they would have drummers like to keep the rhythm of yeah, the marching. Yeah. And so they're like uh-huh. musicians have been part of war before. And so it kind of there's sure. historical precedent for it actually in a, in a fun way. But yeah, that's there are drummers on the back of it too. Yes, you know, that's are, right. The yeah, big the, drums. That's right. Yeah. Timpani yeah, drums exactly. are what they are, but yeah. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This this scene is great. This whole movie is basically an action scene. I mean, really, if you think about yeah, it, it's like yeah. all a big chase through the desert. Um mm-hmm. and so you could cheat and say the whole movie um is my pick <laughs> for <laughs> the one. But I'm glad you picked right, a specific right. moment throughout the movie. Um, which is a great, a great moment uh, in a movie full of them. So, yeah, it's great. We'll we'll talk about the Mad Max series in detail in a couple of weeks when Furiosa comes out. But it is cool to see right. each movie. You kind of see the it builds, you know, like each movie kind of gets bigger and bigger as the budgets get bigger. And uh, yeah, yeah, that one is is full of incredible stunts, practical stunts, enhanced by some CGI in certain certain places. Sure. But um, yeah, great, great film. Great movie. Can't wait to talk more Mad Max in the in the near future. Yeah. Um, all right, folks, we've come down to my number one pick, um, which is from my favorite film ever made, Raiders of the Lost Ark, which I think is not only the best movie ever, but the best action movie ever, has some of the best stunts in movie history. I went with the truck chase. So towards the end of the film, Indy uh, loses track of the Ark of the Covenant. As the Nazis are taking it uh, to uh, to an island uh, before it gets to the island, has to get on a boat before it gets on a boat. It's on a truck and uh, he has to chase that truck down and uh, recover the Ark. So it starts off uh, with a, a nice little exchange where, uh, you know, Sala and Marion are there with Indy and they're, uh, they tell him, you know, where the Ark is and he says he's going after that truck and Sala asks him how, and he says, I don't know. I'm making this up as I go. So it's kind of a, (laughs) that's just a fun little character moment to set up the scene. And uh, he ends up finding a horse. And so it's another movie involving a horse stunt, horse stunts. Right. Um, So he's on the horse first and he has to get from the horse to the truck. So there's that jump that happens. And then once he's on the truck, he has to make his way up to the cab of the truck and uh of course there's nazis all over so it's a part of a big convoy and so he's having to fight all kinds of uh you know nazi soldiers as he's making his way to the truck once he gets in the cab there's another nazi to fight in there who's uh, uh the i think he was the stunt coordinator on the film if i'm not oh mistaken. yeah and so uh so he he gets in a big brawl with him uh mm-hmm. and he gets shot Throughout the course of this, you know, tr- tr- jeeps and stuff will come up behind behind the truck and beside it and shoot at him. And he has to, you know, run guys off the road. So there's cars crashing into the woods or going off cliffs. And, uh, you know, the, the bad guys are coming up to the cab of the truck to fight him. Uh, there's cars in front of him. He has to outmaneuver. And there's all kinds of just different things going on here. Ends up he's on the front of the truck, you know, gets thrown through the windshield and he has to crawl under the truck in order to get back (laughs) into the truck. It's just crazy. Um, What they did with the scene that obviously, you know, Harrison Ford's stunt man is doing much of this work, but uh, Harrison gets involved in, in quite a bit of this, including getting dragged behind the truck. That was actually Harrison Ford doing that, um, which is crazy. (laughs) Um, There's a behind the scenes, a uh, clip of him 
uh, you know, getting ready to do the stunt and someone asks him, um, you know, have you ever done anything like this before? And he's like, dragged behind a truck? Um, no. <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, it's him. He's, he was attached to it as the car. I mean, the car wasn't going extremely fast. Um, I believe they did speed up the film a little bit to make it look like it was, it was a little bit faster, but, um, pretty crazy. He also says in the behind the scenes, I just remembered, he says something about, um, is this dangerous? No, it, it can't be dangerous. If it was dangerous, they would have shot more of the movie by now. <laughs> because <laughs> obviously he's the star of the film so uh <laughs> yeah. you know That's but um it's a great scene it's just it's thrilling to watch from beginning to end it's probably my favorite sequence in the movie it's again a character story-based thing of him kind of just throwing himself out there trying to trying to you know get this precious artifact out of nazi hands and he's obviously very determined you know the things that he's doing to to get this item uh, out of their hands is is pretty crazy. Um, and so, uh, yeah, yeah, great, great sequence, very well shot and edited. Great music, you know, John Williams, he's he's the master and his music throughout it is, is really, really good. Um, and, you know, it, it shows our hero can get hurt. You know, like I said, he gets shot, he gets beat up a lot. He gets right. dragged behind the truck. <laughs> uh, it's not easy for him to do these things. And so it shows shows that he's a, a vulnerable hero, which makes him a lot more relatable. So um yeah great stuff some funny moments too you know the I, I feel like anytime nazis are getting blown up or you know punched it's always fun it always puts a smile yeah, on your yeah. face you know he's smashing the guy's head into the dashboard and you know the guys are flying off the cliff all that all that makes for some uh some good laughs too throughout it so yeah my favorite favorite stunt in a movie is uh is the truck chase in raiders of the lost ark that's it well, I don't, I don't fault you for including that one. And uh, yeah, I just, uh, again, just love the practical stuff. There's no, there's no cheating with, uh, they're not doing wires uh, really. They're not doing CGI um, stuff. So it's just uh, very commendable. Yeah. It's, it's a fun scene. Good movie. Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, thanks to all the, uh, the stunt men and women uh, who have long been the unsung heroes of the uh, film industry, this new movie, the fall guy, uh, which Carson and I got to go see the uh, reactions on the trailer now are on the, on the channel now. And uh, that's really the whole movie is an ode to stuntmen. It's all about a stuntman and uh, Ryan Gosling does a great job in it. Uh, highly recommended. If you get a chance to go watch it, it's very funny, uh, full of some great big action sequences. Uh, they actually both broke a couple records uh, while making the movie, which is pretty cool. Um, wow. and so I would, I would highly recommend checking that out. Check out all these movies we've mentioned here today. Uh, if you haven't already, if you have, let us know your favorite stunt in a movie. Uh, we'd love to have a conversation with you down in the comments below. Bert, thanks again, man. This was a fun one. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of fun. Thanks, Kim. Absolutely. We should do more stunt centric, uh, podcasts in the future. I think there's a lot of different things. We could just do car chases. We could just do fight scenes you know there's all kinds of different ways we could talk about about stunts in movies um like i said they're the unsung heroes they're pretty much in you know every every big budget blockbuster film there's stunts in some way you know again whether it's just and a, you don't know their names that's the thing about it exactly unless it's a chad stelhowski or whatever <laughs> right yeah unless they become big directors yeah. or or actors or yeah. filmmakers themselves so yeah, um, uh, definitely, uh, you know, worth talking more about stunts and movies because it's such a big, big part of of movies. So um, thank yeah. you again for watching. We really appreciate it. Make sure you hit the like button, hit subscribe, hit the bell so you get notified of all our videos. And we'll see you next time right here on The Real World. <laughs>